receiving the ball is going to be the upright rugby rogues based in Canada. Although I shouldn't necessarily re say receiving because we know that these players have excellent ball skills up in the air. And here we were warned about this cheeky little grubber kick this Eagle Impact team likes to do. Number one, that is Ben. Big Ben has been the leading try scorer from this Eagle Impact side. Bren Brassell from Chuckanut. And it is Eagle Impact holding onto the ball. We saw advantage indicated, but advantage gained via the possession. This is Ben with the ball again. He received it off of their number 11, Anthony Wiley from Granite Bay. And it is Ben adding to his try tally. This player has been a revelation this tournament. Definitely the leading try score for this Eagle Impact side, if not for the tournament overall. This is exactly the way that this Eagle Impact side coached by Salty Thompson, Jason Devine, and Johnny Nakika. We see the extras added for Eagle Impact. The score are going to be seven to nothing. We are about 30 seconds into this first half of play. This Eagle Impact side, mostly Sacramento area based for this particular match. Players from Granite Bay, Chuckanut. We do have some SoCal representation. Players from uh, up in, well, back up north, Granite Bay, Motherload. Down south, we got Santa Monica. In particular, number 12, Quinn Perry, has been a player to watch. He is a big bruiser on the field for this Eagle Impact side. When we look across the way at this upright rugby rogues team, you can't say much about them without mentioning their number six, Avery Oidman. Avery, a fantastic player playing for the U18 CRC team. That is the Canada Rugby Championships. Their provincial team structure similar to what we have in the United States with the ITT Interterritorial Tournament. Avery has been their leading try scorer, so it might be between him and Ben for the leader of the tournament. And of course, also there's number 15. This is young Avery that we were just speaking of with an easy try. That's exactly what the answer that Upright would be looking for. We have a match on our hands. It is number... <laughs> Seven points for Eagle Impact, five points currently for Upright Rugby out of Canada. Earlier in the day, we had a guest commentator, Vaha Sikia, in the booth talking about Upright Rugby and talking about rugby development in general. He appreciated that showing from number six from Upright. Sharing the rugby love, USA and Canada, it's a border battle, but we'll cheer on good rugby overall. So well done here by this upright rugby team answering with an early try, answering the call from the Eagle Impact. So we are tied seven to seven in this match. It is upright maintaining possession of their ball once again. We did have a rain and lightning delay a little bit earlier in the, early in the day. I'm going to dig through and make sure that I've got my proper upright rugby information. Their coach, Tyler Legat, been bugging him for his rosters all tournament long. He's been so focused on winning. He's got his boys here in the U18 Elite Final. We have the girls in the year U18 Elite Final as well. We see a penalty to Eagle Impact and we see a nice chip downfield. That is at number 12 that we spoke of earlier, uh, Quinn Perry from Santa Monica. The ball in the hands of Upright Rugby, tackled well by this Eagle Impact side. We see a couple of different jerseys with this Upright Rugby team. Player number three, for example, wearing this white and green strip. That is the Kuale jerseys that we saw earlier worn by the Utah Barbarians women's team. So we have a couple of the Barbarians helping out this Upright Rugby side. Traveling a little bit light after their showing last week in a Magnificent Sevens. That was their home province tournament. This team took second, falling to Bedford from the UK. An experienced and skilled squad. So there are two teams full of potential. This Eagle Impact side, coached by Salty Thompson. He is one of the coaches with our USA Boys Age Grade All-American program. He's coached U19s, he's coached U20s, he's coached with the University of Arizona, with Arizona State. Of course, known with the Tempe Rugby Club down in Arizona. And Salty, not necessarily even the most famous of all the Thompsons in this rugby world. His sons, Ryan Thompson and Brett Thompson, both amazing rugby players in their own right, inheriting some of dad's speed. Dad was actually born and raised in Northern Ireland, ran 400 meters, at one point ran a relay with Sir Sebastian Coe. 
a storied rugby career of his own for Coach Salty Thompson. His son, Brett Thompson, has played for USA Sevens, playing professionally over in the UK. His other son, Ryan Thompson, playing professionally here in the United States with our new Pro Rugby League. And if Pro Rugby is watching right now, they need to look at this number six. It is Avery all the way again, dotting down another try for upright. Two minutes and 30 seconds left in this first half of play. Now we hear the coaches encouraging their kicker to take their time. He does have 30 seconds able to take the kick. It is a hot one out here, reaching close to the triple digits yet again. So if we have the full 30 seconds, we may well take them. This is Ethan lining up the kick in that number 15 jersey. He's been another stellar player for this upright rugby team. The kick is good, that's going to extend their lead. We'll get a score confirmation. I've got 14 to seven. So we see a beauty of a kickoff here from Upright, putting pressure on this Eagle Impact team, but we see a penalty called. Looks like he may have been playing the player in the air. So this is number 12, Quinn from Santa Monica carrying the ball forward. The long pass outside, we saw that shooter. That was Avery shooting on defense. Now it is Eagle Impact. That was Ben, number one with the ball. Passing the ball out wide, it looks like it went into the hands of their number three. That would be Gavin Janis, another of the Granite Bay players. Quite a big Granite Bay rugby contingent on this Eagle Impact team. And we see an unforced error. This Eagle Avery, Impact Avery. team knocking the ball on. Going to be a scrum to upright. One minute yet to go. 14 to seven here in the first half with an upright rugby league. A couple of substitutions coming on. Again, we see a couple of different jerseys. There are players from the Utah Cannibals and the Utah Barbarians helping out this upright team. Off cause number six, he's gonna get a little bit of a breather. All that effort scoring the tries, he's merited a bit of a rest. Of course, he can come back on under the new substitution laws. The clock's still winding down, about 40 seconds left to the scrum. Wheeling around, but not quite far enough for the wheel to be called. Play on, says referee Michelle O'Brien. We see a solid tackle from the Eagle Impact side. See the ball lost by Upright Rugby. And this time it is a penalty against. It's going to be a penalty to Eagle Impact. Certainly will be looking for another try if they can in these closing seconds of the first half. That was Gavin Janis, number three, with the tap. Getting it all the way outside. That may be their number 13. If so, that's Andrew Turner out of Granite Bay. We see a high pass and another shoot. We saw this happen just before. Two number sixes on the field with this upright rugby team. And both of these sixes doing work. And this leaves a beautiful hole upfield. This is number 14, one of these Utah players guessing with the upright side, saying, thank you for letting me play. Thank you for letting me score a try. He's in. It's going to be set up another easy conversion kick. Likely to see the attempt out of this number 15, Ethan. Currently 19 to five, pending the results of this conversion. This will end the first half of action. It was Eagle Impact that scored first, about 10 seconds into the opening play. They had that grubber kick downfield, and it was Ben Brossel wearing that number one jersey that came away with a try. But seconds later, it was Upright Rugby that answered, and it's been all upright the remainder of the half. They are currently leading 19 to five as a conversion kick misses its mark. We'll be back with all the second half action in just a moment.
So that was that number one from Eagle Impact. He opened up the scoring earlier in the game. Gren ben Brossel from Chuckanut Rugby giving Eagle Impact just a start they want to this half, bringing the score 19 to 10, pending the conversion kick. So once again, Ben scoring in the opening minute of play. This is going to be the number number six from Eagle Impact. This time the kick is true. Skyler Mitchell from a motherload rugby based in California. Looking over right now, the upright rugby roster, we have multiple teams representative, Oakville Crusaders, the Toronto Saracens, Toronto Scottish, Niagara Wasps, Brentford Harlequins, the Regina Rogues, East, and then we have Sione Mahe representing Harriman Rugby from here in Utah. That might well have been Sione that had the closing try for upright in the first half, wearing the number 14 jersey. We see a knock on from upright. So again, it's Eagle Impact making a strong impact here in the first minute of the match. Currently trailing upright rugby out of Canada, 19 to 12. So players that we note, one of the number sixes was Avery Oideman of the Oakville Crusaders playing with this upright rugby squad. Again, one of the players playing in their U18 CRC championships. And then Ethan Hanger in the number 15 jersey. He's been taking their conversion kicks with the long blonde hair, plays for the Brentford Harlequins. And we see Ethan lined up right now in the fly half position, going to be a scrum. It's an eagle impact put in. Gavin Janis, number three, out of Granite Bay in California. We're going to see the scrum reset. Referee Michelle O'Brien calling the game in the middle. And this time it's Eagle Impact winning the scrum. The ball finding its mark safely. We see the number 11 attacking. This is going into the hands yet again of their number one, Bren Brossel, going for the corner. He ducks out of the tackle. It's going to be Ben with a hat trick. This is his third try of the match, bringing Eagle Impact right back into the game. It's going to be 19-17 pending this conversion kick. Four minutes yet to play here in the second half of rugby. We'll see if Eagle Impact can hit this conversion to tie the game. But when we talk about players of this tournament, players that we're keeping an eye on, it is this number one Ben that has been outstanding for Eagle Impact Rugby. Well done on his teammate with a breakaway in the pass and well struck, what a conversion kick. This ties the match. That was number six, Skylar Mitchell from Motherload Rugby in California. The game is tied 19-19, three minutes and 47 seconds left to play. So we're gonna see another Eagle Impact kickoff. This number 12, Quinn Perry, representing Santa Monica, a cheeky player, strong in his run. We've seen Eagle Impact with a couple of the grubbers, but now Upright's aware, so it's going to be Eagle Impact putting the ball in the air. It's Ethan Hager that comes away with the ball, passes it outside. And we're going to go through the hands of this Canadian team. Chris with their passing, able to make the long passes, good offloads. We see a ferocious tackle. Number 13, Andrew Turner of Granite Bay, shown a yellow, lifting the player up in the air. We did see that his shoulders the player dropped shoulders below his feet, so not deemed a safe tackle. Michelle O'Brien giving him a yellow card. That is two minutes on the bench for our Eagle Impact player. And so now we see Upright trying to take advantage. They've got this one man. They've got the extra player on. That's Quinn with the tackle, number 12. One of the multiple number sixes for Upright Rugby. And we see the ball being left. Uh, questionable with throwing the ball away. We have seen that be a yellow card in other situations. You'd hate to see this Eagle Impact team go down to just five players. So referee Michelle O'Brien awarding another 10 meters to the upright rugby squad. It is Ethan Hager that has tackled just out of bounds on the far side of the field. I imagine Eagle Impact will take their time with this line out, trying to eat away the clock, get back to full strength. It is tied 19 to 19. Both these teams looking for a try, more importantly, looking to prevent the try. This game, should it remain tied, would go to overtime. We hear the upright coaches calling for no jump on the line out.
looking to just contain and defend this upright coaching staff and expert Cracker Jack staff. It's Tyler Leggett coaching the men, Mark Smerden with the women. We see the ball going out wide. Again, Eagle Impact short one player, so he doesn't have the same support we normally have out on the wing. It's a penalty awarded though. We see offsides called. So it's Eagle Impact with a penalty. That is number 12, that is Quinn Perry taking the tap, feeding it to his mate on the right side of the field. The ball bubbled and bumped it up in the air, back and forth and back and forth. We're gonna check time on the sin bin and see if this player is allowed back on the field. A few more seconds for number 13, Andrew Turner, before they can go back to full strength. All right, we got the field. Andrew Turner allowed back onto the field. Didn't catch it for a first second. Ben Brassell, the leading try scorer here for this Eagle Impact team, had come off as a substitution. He is back on, switching out his teammate, Anthony Wiley, this number 11 out of Granite Bay. So Eagle Impact back to full strength. We have about 50 seconds left in the match. Still tied 19-19. This is an Eagle Impact scrum. Of course, upright rugby looking to disrupt. The ball is in the scrum and it goes back out. Well played by the scrum half and we see Ben on the attack. Ben offloading, uh, barely misses the connection with Andrew Turner, but we see a penalty awarded. It is a penalty to Eagle Impact. Just shy of halfway. And now we see a yellow card shown to an upright player. It is going to be upright, finishing this half down a player. Seven to eagle advantage, six to upright. This is that number 14 that had that try earlier in the match. One of the guest players from the Utah Cannibal side. So Quinn Perry, number 12 from Santa Monica. He loops the pass far outside into the hands. Number six, Skyler Mitchell, mother load with the ball. Looking to offload, he goes inside to number four. That is Logan Lambertson out of the Sierra Foothills program. We see play on, ball unfortunately knocked forward. That was Gavin Janis. So we'll set up for a scrum. We've seen Gavin playing the scrum half position. There is still time yet to play. We had a couple stoppages with these yellow cards issued. So Michelle O'Brien with the official game clock. Eagle Impact looking to disrupt. If Upright can get a last second try here, I'm sure they would take it. Otherwise, this game is going to go to overtime. We see a bit of confusion. There is no contest. Instead, we see the Eagle Impact scrum half, Ga excuse me, Gavin Janis protecting on the weak side there. So not challenging on the side of the put in. A pretty heads up play given the opportunity. Want to prevent that upright try. They don't want to lose the game. We substitute in a tactical sub, bringing in number three, a scrum specialist, if you will, for this upright rugby side. Another one of their guest players from the Utah Barbarians. Maybe a concern as well with this number 20 that came off and the blood. So here we see Gavin Janis land up straight behind the scrum. It is Eagle Impact nearly stealing it. Big tactician of play go here going. Both teams calling in instructions. We see Jason Devine up on his feet on the Eagle Impact bench. Of course, Tyler Leggett with the upright rugby team. And now we see a free kick awarded to Upright Rugby. The ball out the tunnel is indicated by our referee, Michelle O'Brien. So again, remember that this is Upright Rugby team is down one man. This is an advantage to Eagle Impact with one extra player, but this is the hands of the guy. If there's anybody who wants to have the ball in hand, it is this number six from Upright Rugby, Avi Oidman. He is going to score what is going to be his third try of the match, diving it in, no time left on the clock. Short one player, it is Upright Rugby that steals the win. They are going to go up 24 to 19 over Eagle Impact Academy. What a thrilling finish to this boys' elite final. This is exactly the rugby that we're looking for. It's coming down to last second plays. Yesterday, this upright team was upset twice in pool play action, falling on the final play. This time, they get it on the final play. It was Eagle Impact hoping to go through with another overtime win, as they had done in their quarterfinal earlier today. And that is the game, 26 to 19, as the conversion is hit. Congratulations to the Upright Rugby Rogues out of Ontario, Canada. They are your 2016 U18 Boys Elite Champions of the North American Invitational Sevens. Well played by Eagle Impact Rugby Academy. What a match. Looking forward to see this rivalry grow over the years. We'll be back in just a moment here with the girls' U18 Elite action. It will be our final final of the day of the North American Invitational Sevens.